you to the comic shop I'll let you read about Cyclops I'll have you spending all you got Trump's Space Force is looking hot Damn damn Let's roll this mother. Here we go. One more time. Left hand legit back in the house to talk to all of you beautiful people out there in Webland about comic books that do what? They move the needle. That's right. We're talking about sequential art that gets your pulse pounding, makes you want to reach your little hand in your pocket, pull out a few dollar bills, and spend them on some good comic books. Now, we have been talking pretty extensively about image comics because I grew up at the height of the image revolution when they first started. I was there firsthand to experience it myself, to fall in love with image comic books. And we've talked about Youngblood. We've talked about Wildcats. We've talked about Cyberforce. We've talked about Shadowhawk. We've talked about the Savage Dragon. The one comic we have not talked about is Spawn. And unfortunately, I don't have a Spawn number one, so we're not gonna talk about it here today. But what we are gonna talk about is the path that led to Spawn number one and led Todd McFarlane to becoming one of the most legendary creators in the history of the comic book industry. So what are we talking about? We're talking about Spider-Man number one. Now this gorgeous comic you see before you, hand-drawn by Todd McFarlane, came with multiple variants. You know, we had a gold cover, we had a silver cover, we had a few different covers. But the one we're gonna talk about today is just this beautiful standard cover. And you'll notice this is kinda of interesting. Uh, we've got US and Canada. We've got US and Canada. Throwing the UK in there. One pound for this sexy comic book. One pound. So, let's just open this beautiful thing up, you know? This is some of the most famous comic book art in history. And inside we have a story written by Todd and drawn by Todd that basically covers, you know, just a, a little story in Spider-Man's life. This is Torment, part one of six. I don't know that game. Nickelodeon had a club and a magazine? I didn't know they had a magazine. That's cool. So basically we've got a thug who's shaking down a woman for her purse and you know, our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is gonna uh, wrap him up, quite literally. The Uncanny X-Men, this is back when a rainbow was just a rainbow. I love that the, the drum beat is doom, 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 doom. I don't want you to think that it's that it's Dr. Doom though. It's not Dr. Doom. It's just the cool, cool concept for a drum beat. The ritual fire pot, the praying to spirits, the allegiance to things most unholy. Magic begins to reach out. And this character here, rise further and further until the blackness starts to bubble. And boom, the lizard shows up. Then we go, we go back to Peter Parker's apartment with his lovely lady, Mary Jane Watson, and right away, honestly, the first thing I notice, having not read this comic book in 25 years, the first thing I notice is how Todd McFarlane's artwork has improved so much just between the time he did Spider-Man number one and the time he did Spawn number one. It's quite astonishing. So, you know, Peter's basically talking all about himself and what it's like to be the Spider-Man and, you know, uh, uh, why, why did this, this thug here in the beginning, why did old boy think that he could stand a chance against Spider-Man when, when Spider-Man has even uh, had one against Thanos for God's sake? Maybe I'm just too logical, but if none of those guys could kill me, why did this punk tonight think that he'd be the one? And Mary Jane is just, you know, you sure like talking about yourself a lot. And you see the lizard coming back, you know. Now, Peter, aren't we getting a teeny bit high on yourself? Uh, probably, <laughs> but I gotta tell you, when it comes right down to it, I could be pretty awesome if I want. And then all of a sudden, tickle war. Uh-oh, everybody loves a tickle fight. That really happened. Bonk's Adventure. Now, we're talking about Turbo Graphic 16. I could do a whole dissertation on the TurboGrafx-16, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna just go ahead and let you look that up on Wikipedia if you're not familiar with TurboGrafx-16. See, they, lift, they left out an I because that's awesome. 
Lizard basically like shows up, uh, you know, he's gonna eat a rat back here. He's gonna eat this rat, but then he notices these thugs that are stealing televisions. And so he decides he's gonna eat them instead. And I really, really like this. He gets shot. This is kind of neat. And doom, 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 doom. The drums are silent. See, he's been shot. You can see the blood. And I love this part. In the blackness, it begins again. Really cool way to letter this, I think. And I'm not sure who this character is, but I'm, I'm excited to find out. This makes me want to keep going. So, so we're talking about something really special here. And now Peter's gonna, you know, throw on his spider suit. He's gonna go out. He hopes to be home before dinner. And he does, you know, another classic Todd piece of art. Another classic Todd piece of art. Talk about a guy that knew how to drew Spider-Man better than anyone. Uh, if I had to pick two people who drew Spider-Man for me better than anyone, it would definitely be Todd McFarlane and then Eric Larson, the creator of Savage Dragon, also did some great work on Amazing Spider-Man. Or was it, I think it was actually Web of Spider-Man. Uh, but it was a, it was a good little run. I really liked it. Stan Lee's soapbox. This was a, this was good. You guys, if you've been paying attention to any of these videos, you know that I really love these little write-ups that let us uh, have a little insight into the minds of our favorite comic book creators. Hi, heroes. Want to know why comic book column writers get gray? Try this on for size. A few issues back, I told you to watch for Into Thin Air, the new Larry Cohen movie in which some of your favorite bullpenners play cameo roles. That means Marvel, Marvel creators. Um, so far, so good, right? Uh-uh. Larry just told me the title was changed to Ambulance. Naturally, by the time he told me, the soapbox column touting the other title had already been released. Well, to avoid any further foul-ups, just watch for a new thriller, which may or may not be called Ambulance, featuring my co-star, Eric Roberts. Co-star. Well, I share the screen with him for almost 30 whole seconds. Stan Lee's in a movie called Ambulance with Eric Roberts. Might want to check that out. By the way, have you noticed the many new comic book titles and companies popping up? Recently, someone said he was sorry for having all this competition. I told him to save his sympathy. I mean, competition is what it's all about. Nothing like the sound of another comics company breathing down our necks to make us work even harder. And who benefits by it all? Hey, who else but you, the readers? You, who keep us alive by shelling out your shekels for our megs. If we give you what you want, you'll buy us. If not, it's goodbye, Charlie. And that's the way it should be. You've been wonderfully loyal to us over the years, and no words of mine can fully express our gratitude. That's why I make you this pledge. We'll never stop busting our chops to give you the best we've got to prove worthy of your support, to excite you, to amuse you, and for better or worse, to always level with you. Fact is, there's no way we'll ever forget our earliest adage. We're nothing without you. Excelsior, Stan. Now, is it just me or should we put Stan Lee back in charge of Marvel Comics? Because this is the way creators should behave towards fans. And all of you wannabe hacks working for Marvel right now should go back and read this in Spider-Man number one by Todd McFarlane. Because Stan is, Stan is preaching gospel right here. Competition is what it's all about. So if you're scared of Comicsgate, you're scared of Indiegogo, you're scared of Ethan Van Skyver, you're scared of diversity in comics, you should be because they're your competition and they are kicking your ass. And as they all begin to unify together, they're gonna kick your ass more. And now that Marvel Comics, Marvel Cow Mix, get it, because it's a cow. Now that Marvel Comics is outsourcing their characters to IDW to have comic books created for kids because they can't get their shit together and do it the way Stan said they should, well, it's, it's a damn embarrassment. And it's proof that Comicsgate is alive and well, and it's proof that Comicsgate is winning the war for the hearts and minds of young men everywhere who desire heroes. So let's go through it again. Nothing like the sound of another comics company breathing down our necks to make us work even harder. Stan wasn't scared. See, all the hacks, they're scared. 
They're terrified of jawbreakers. They're terrified of cyber frog. They're terrified of red rooster. They're terrified of Trump's space force because it is breathing down their necks and they don't know how to handle it because they can't create a better comic than their competition in comics gate. And who benefits by it all? Hey, who else but you, the readers, you who keep us alive by shelling out your shekels for our megs. If we give you, the fans, what you want, you'll buy us. And if we don't, it's goodbye, Charlie. And, and that is exactly what has happened, isn't it? Exactly what has happened. And no one can deny it. I mean, okay, let's face it. They can deny it. They can pretend this isn't happening right now. They can call me a racist, a bigot, a homophobe, a sexist, a Trump supporter, a Nazi. They can call me whatever they want, but it doesn't change the fact that they suck at creating comic books. And when, and when you suck at creating comic books, it opens the door for someone who doesn't suck to come right in and steal your job because you suck at your job. And that's the truth. Now you fans, you've been wonderfully loyal to Marvel comics over the years and no words of Stan Lee himself can fully express the gratitude Marvel Comics used to have for their fans. Stan made this pledge and unfortunately now that Stan's not at Marvel Comics this pledge is no longer in existence. They'll never stop busting their chops to give you the best they've got to prove worthy of your support, to excite you, to amuse you, and for better or worse, to always level with you. Because the fact is, there's no way Marvel Comics will ever forget their earliest adage that they are nothing without the fans. But guess what, they have forgotten, haven't they? They have completely forgotten. They've thrown, they've thrown that aside and gone with Social Justice Warrior Comics, that have killed the industry, that have repelled fans time and again with toxic creators. You wanna talk about toxic masculinity? Let's talk about toxic creators who never bothered to read what Stan had to say in this soapbox in Spider-Man number one by Todd McFarlane. They have no clue what they've done, the damage they have caused, not just to the comic industry, but to their own friggin' careers, because guess what? The chickens are coming home to roost. They're coming home, and Ollie, you better be ready because the amount of insults that you have dished out over social media towards fans and other creators alike, it is all going to come back on you. Stan Lee knew that you don't treat people that way. Ethan Van Skyver knows you don't treat people that way. My boy Zach at Diversity in Comics, he knows. Mitch and Elizabeth Breitweiser, they know. Tim Lim, he knows. Brett R. Smith and John Mallon know. That umbrella guy knows. Yellow Flash knows. Everybody knows, except for the people working at Marvel Calmix right now. But I digress. Arachnophobia, I heard they're doing a remake. I'm not gonna watch it. And boom, here we go, end of the comic. So Spider-Man and Lizard, it's coming to a head in part two. It makes you want to buy Spider-Man number one. And again, here we have another amazing, amazing write-up from Todd McFarlane, where he goes into great detail as to what led to the creation of Spider-Man. It was because he didn't feel he could keep up with the bi-weekly schedule that Amazing Spider-Man had during the summer months. Check this out. Believe it or not, comic books, comic books sometimes would come out twice a month. When kids we're out of school for the summer, Stan Lee was smart enough to know, oh, we need to give him a comic book every other week, baby. And so they increased the, the print run. So you would go from a monthly issue to a, a bi-weekly issue. So you could literally get an Amazing Spider-Man comic twice a month in July, August, and September. Or is it, maybe it's June, July, August. Todd goes into a lot of other stuff here. It's actually really, really interesting to, to see the whole evolution of this and see, you know, how he was learning to become a writer. And that's 
why this book was created for him, and this book is not was not at that time in continuity with all the other books, so that Todd didn't have to worry about trying to focus on what all the other writers were doing with Spider-Man and all the other Spidey books. Todd was allowed to just express himself fully and completely the way creators should be allowed to. And there's a lot more in this. That's why I suggest you pick up Spider-Man number one. Time out. Advanced D&D. See, I, I don't know. If someone will tell me in the comments below, is it finally cool to play Dungeons & Dragons? Uh, I know Magic is, like, cool, supposedly, The Gathering. But Dungeons & Dragons, is that still, like, are you still a real nerd if you play D&D? &D? Uh, or have you become accepted now? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below. Super Contra, baby. Whoa, by Konami. I always thought Konami made good games. If you like Konami games, let me know in the comments below. If you like awesome comics, let me know in the comments below. If you can explain to me why this one has, is, is a pound in the United Kingdom and these two were not, let me know in the comments below. This is, this is where it all started. This is where Todd came into his own. And it would only be a couple years later that we would see Image Comics spring to life and change the industry forever. And it would only be 25 years after that that Comicsgate would spring to life and again change the industry forever because that is what is happening right now. Right now, the industry is evolving again because a group of creators got fed up. They got blackballed for no good reason, no legitimate reason, they've had their names run through the mud because all they wanted to do was what Todd did with this comic. And you know Todd did it because there's 18 different covers to the damn thing that all are the same and just have a slight variation on, you know, is it gold, is it silver, is it this, is it what, what, what it? Move the needle. That's what these guys want to do in Comicsgate. They want to move the needle. What did Todd want to do? He wanted to move the needle. Why did they create image? They wanted to move the needle. They wanted to bring fans back and give them books that made them excited to go to the comic shop once a month and pick up issues and issues and issues and drop 20 bucks, 40 bucks, 150 bucks like that umbrella guy will do because he loves comics. And, and, and they're treated very poorly now. Guys like that umbrella guy, guys like Yellow Flash treated very inappropriately by people who are supposed to be trying to move the needle. And instead what they're doing is they're refusing the needle. What they are is they're, they think that this means they need to be Jack Kevorkian. We're going to stick a needle in the comic book industry and we're going to kill it. And that's what they've done. And, and, and the proof is in the fact that Marvel Comics is now outsourcing comic books to IDW. Their competition is now making Marvel Comics is now making Disney characters into comics like Donald Duck, like Mickey Mouse, is now making Star Wars comic books. Marvel Comics isn't doing it because Marvel Comics got woke and are going to go broke. And five years from now, mark my words, it's going to be Ethan Van Skyver. It's going to be Mitch Breitweiser. It's going to be my boy Zach. It's going to be Tim Lim who are writing Marvel comic books for Comicsgate because Marvel has jumped the shark by hiring a bunch of no talent hacks who cannot sell comic books to kids, who cannot treat the fans with any dignity and any respect the way that Todd always did. The way that Marvel and image creators always did for the first 50 years of comic books existence. They knew what mattered was the buyer the fan, the consumer, the client, whatever you want to refer to as the, the people, whatever you want to call the people who put food on your table, they took care of them. And in return, the fans, the community, took care of the industry. This comic itself, how many copies did it sell? It was the highest selling comic book in the history of comics at the time it was released. Can you believe that sold more issues than anyone. Is that because it had 18 covers? Maybe. Does it matter? No, it doesn't because it did what? It moved the needle. It made people say, I love comic books. 
Todd's awesome. Marvel's so smart for letting him have his own book. So let's see if Marvel Comics can get their ish together and give fans what they want again for the first time in years. And it's unfortunate that Bob Iger, the man in charge of Disney, has forgotten where all these characters came from. They came from comic books. They didn't come from television. They didn't come from original screenplays. They came from comic books. And if you don't put people in charge of the comic books who know what they're doing, who know how to make fans excited for comics, who know how to move the needle, eventually you're not going to have any stories left to draw from. And you're going to be relying on screenwriters to come up with wholly original tales. And I have no problem with that. Don't get me wrong. I want good stories. But I think it is a huge mistake to forget that kids, young men, all over this country would love to spend every month with Spider-Man. They don't know that they can spend every month with Spider-Man because, because their parents can't take them to a comic shop anymore, can't trust Marvel Comics to do what's right for their children. So comic books just fall to the wayside. But we know we can trust Comicsgate. We know that we could give Spider-Man to Ethan Van Skyver and Peter would be safe with him. Our kids would be safe with Uncle Ethan. And that's all I have to say, you know? Our kids were safe with Uncle Todd. Our kids were safe with Grandpa Stan. Make comics great again. Move the needle, Marvel. Get your ish together. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Stop doing this. You are, you are undermining this country. You are taking away something so precious to boys throughout this nation for decades. You are destroying it. And I don't think the higher-ups even know they're doing it. And if they do, they should be run out of the business on a damn rail. And that's what I got to say about it. So, if you like what I had to say, leave some comments. Give a thumbs up to this video. If you don't like what I had to say, tell me why. Write in the comments below. Tell me why. I want to know why I'm wrong. I want to know why you think you're right. That comics are better off than they ever were before. Because the numbers don't lie. The numbers do not lie. This, this, how many comics did this sell? How many? How many? Let's find out. Over 2 million copies sold. 2 million copies of this comic book were sold. <laughs> it's like, it's unfathomable today. These, these twerps who work at Marvel cannot even comprehend, I don't, I don't think they could count that high if I gave them a calculator. Incomprehensible, inconceivable. No, very conceivable. If you know what you're doing, if you care about your output, if you take pride in your work, it is conceivable. But it takes dedication, it takes honesty with yourself and saying my work can improve. And until the social justice gatekeepers who have destroyed comic books, either realize and accept that they have effed up and failed massively. Complete embarrassments to the comic book industry, to the comic book community, to themselves, and to their parents. Until they can admit that, comic books are going to continue to die. They are going to continue. The flame is going to flicker out completely for Marvel comic books. And you will not see them anymore unless they are made by IDW. Until that happens, nothing is going to change. And we're going to continue to look back on comic books like this from the 90s and say, wow, how'd they do it? How did they do it? They gave a crap. That's how they did it. They gave a crap. The same way Ethan Van Skyver and my boy Zach and Mitch Breitweiser and Tim Lim have done it. They give a crap about putting out a quality product that fans can enjoy. Even when it's niche, even when it's niche, like Trump's Space Force, there is still a demographic they are targeting. 
And that's what it's all about. When you're writing a Spider-Man comic book, your job is not to target one-eyed Latinos in wheelchairs. Your job is not to target transgenders living in New York City and Los Angeles, California. Your job is not to target inner city black children with no father. Your job is to target Spider-Man fans. Imagine that. Your job is to target Spider-Man fans, comic book fans. Try, if you can, if you can just wrap your brain around first trying to target Spider-Man fans, and once you've mastered that, then you need to have this revelation and you need to say, hmm, now how do I attract comic book fans who don't necessarily like Spider-Man? Oh gee, I don't know, maybe you throw the Punisher in there. I don't know, maybe you bring the Fantastic Four in. I don't know, maybe you do a crossover and we can finally see Spawn versus Spider-Man, Savage Dragon versus Spider-Man. Bring those image creators back. Let them do a couple issues, pay them well. It's gonna, it's gonna drum up attention. And that's what you want. You want attention for your art. You want attention for the compelling stories you write. And if you don't know how to get that attention, you know, I suggest that you take a look back at your Twitter history and see the way you've alienated fans. See the way you've, you've repelled them, you've pushed them away forcibly. The way you've insulted and degraded the fans who pay their hard-earned money. Like Stan said in the soapbox, they pay their hard-earned shekels. They pay your rent, mother effers. They pay your rent. That's all I gotta say. Two million copies sold. If you disagree with what I said, before you start complaining in the comments below, what I want you to do is I want you to tell me the last time you sold two million mother effing copies. And then, and then maybe you have some authority on the issue, huh? Huh? Because that's what I was taught. I was taught to listen to people who were more successful than me. Not friggin' losers. Not people that can't make any money. Not people that can't put out a product people enjoy. I was taught to listen to winners. And I did, and I have my entire life, because that's how you become a winner, is by listening to other winners. And that's all I got to say. Like this video. Go, hashtag move the needle when you buy a comic book and you love it. Take a picture and hashtag move the needle. Let, let the publishers, the publishers know. Let them know what comic books move the needle for you so that they'll continue to put out quality work or maybe put out work that's quality for the first time in a few years. That'd be nice too, huh? How about that, how about that? Like, subscribe, hit the ding dong for notifications. You know you wanna hear me wax philosophical a little bit more about comic books. And I'm putting out a couple of these videos every day. So I hope you liked it. I hope it made you think. I hope for you young comic book creators, it inspired you to try to what? Move the needle for the fans. They're desperate. They're desperate for better comics. They're desperate for creators to come and save the characters we love and have loved for generations in this country. And that's all I have to say. I appreciate you guys listening to me. I really do. And I hope it makes a difference. Go support a comic book you love by hashtagging Move the Needle. And I'll see you guys next time on Testosterone Overload!